So, you know, the way I look at it is that uh, uh, in the world of, you know, where we till uh, recent time were talking about are we a B2B company, are we a B2C company, are we a B2B2C company, you know, uh, but suddenly came this whole wave of social and digital media and everybody said, hey, listen, we are an H to H company, human to human, right? Now, when, when you give your introductions right now, along with that, also tell us that what does this whole H to H opportunity uh, from a change perspective mean to you in any order? I think I can probably relate to this question the best because uh, we're in the business of people. And um, sometimes in life, it is a lot easier to fix a machine. If there's a problem, you can take a part out, you can calibrate it, and you can put it back. But when you're dealing with people, it is next to impossible. Each one of us, in our own respective ways, and I mean this in a good way, is a complex human being. We've got our own perspectives. We've got our own unique ways of being able to relate to situations and handle situations. I'm in the people's business. And unlike all other assets today, I know you mentioned uncertainties, and this is probably a message for some CEOs. It's very difficult today to ascertain which asset you want to invest in. Till a few years back, it was property. I'm not too sure now. Which business, with area? But I firmly believe, and I start the answer to my question by saying, I invest in people. This is one asset that I believe will never depreciate. You go wrong sometimes. Absolutely. The heart in the right place is very important in business. That's a beautiful line that you just said. And I think all of us in our businesses are supposed to have our heart in the right place if you want a sustainable business. The H2H -H factor for me is not just customer, like you correctly said. Uh, it's about all the stakeholders in a company. And as long as a company is conscious that every stakeholder in the chain has to win and consistently win, you don't have a business that runs. And uh, that's something which is very dear to us as an organization. And uh, and it's very important that in your good times as an organization, you're good with your stakeholders. Because every company goes through the ups and downs that any business cycle can bring in. But in your good times, if you're good with people, with the stakeholders, and that's the H2H -H factor for me, then when the bad times are there, maybe people won't help you. But they won't come and be nasty with you. And because you're at your weakest point when your business is down. And that's the H2H -H factor that's actually brought us as an organization back from the brink because none of our people, none of our vendors, none of our stakeholders, uh, the shareholders, everybody stayed on. And that's the H2H -H factor. Social media today can very quickly make people very cynical. I mean, uh, these, the, we live in an age where the glass more often is seen as half empty rather than half full these days. That's the kind of cynicism that it can bring. And that's what we need to guard against. And that's the other H factor that we need to see because the human being today is looking at what's in it for me. Right. I disagree there because what I saw was that if, even if there was some kind of um, negative uh, comment coming in, are enough people who would give it a perspective which would be very different from what the person would be thinking. And at times when I respond back, they appreciate. So, social media is a place where you are in the open marketplace. You don't have the ivory tower to defend you. So your thoughts, your perception, your clarity in terms of what you want to communicate and the emotions, the feeling or the leadership change that you want to bring through should be very clearly demonstrated and lived up to. You can't have a different persona compared to what you put there. Right. My personal feeling is a very powerful um, tool, and for businesses of tomorrow, you have to have a strong influence in terms of social media and use it uh, very constructively and beneficially to the entire, I think, population, country or society as a large. 
Right. I completely agree. And uh, yet again, you know, when we talk about um, the opportunity to address uh, criticism or cynicism, uh, is far more direct, uh, is far more, uh, you know, spontaneous on social media than it, that, than it has ever been. And there are profiles that are marked on how quickly you respond back. Are you responding in 24 hours, 12 hours, immediate responses? Today, your Facebook pages are ranked basis how quick your response time is. Uh, so yes, it's an opportunity and also a responsibility. Absolutely. Any take on it, Monish, uh, this whole influencer part that some of us play? Yeah. So uh, knowledge is power. We've all heard that statement. The means to get the knowledge, assimilate the knowledge, analyze the knowledge, process the knowledge, disseminate the knowledge, has to be a lot more powerful. And social media is one such means to be able to do so. Now today, the numbers range, but broadly, about one third of the population of the globe uses social media. That's the power of that social is media. happening with using a suffix or a prefix called tech. You put it to anything, and suddenly, you know, you've, you've got the interests of a lot of people around you. Uh, as a training company, I think uh, I, I would cease to be relevant if the only trainings that I'm doing is inside classrooms or the one-on-one -on -one coaching I'm doing is always face-to-face. -face. Uh, I think that training tech as a word or edu tech as a word or MOOC as a platform that, you know, mass open online uh, courses, all of that, uh, I'm just talking from the perspective of my industry, but you practically look at any industry today and uh, tech is becoming that much more relevant. And like you said, the change has already happened. But having said that, a lot is changing very, very quickly, right? And it's actually changing so quickly that if you ask any cyber law expert or if you ask any cyber specialist, they would tell you that there are still a lot of lacunas, there are still a lot of gray areas, because before you start really looking at a trend or an insight on one, you already have another one to deal with. So chances are that once the dust settles, whether we're talking cloud, whether we talk big data, whether we talk insights, whether we talk digital social media, um, privacy, and whether it is being invaded, all of these things put together. Once the dust settles, what do you leaders think uh, would the world look like? What are some of the caveats that we should be aware of? Uh, what are some of the opportunities that we need to take on very responsibly? Uh, what's your take on that? So, you know, once again, this is a topic which is very close to my heart because we actually specialize in advising companies. Now, uh, you mentioned cyber. India is, I don't know how many of you are aware of the fact that it, one of the 14 countries in the, in the globe, out of all the countries, which has got cyber laws. The others don't have it. Now, very recently, you mentioned privacy. Uh, in the European Union, on the 25th of May, there's a new regulation called uh, Global Data Protection Regulation, GDPR. Uh, which has been uh, formed. And even today, you have situations where you have Indian companies who feel it doesn't apply to them. It's very important for us to take a step beyond and see as to whether we really need to have a business in Europe for the regulation to apply to us. In India as well, uh, and that's one of the great things about our Honorable Prime Minister uh, in the Modi, uh, very soon we are going to be seeing a new act. It's already been tabled in the parliament and from all the noise that we hear, uh, it is going to be enacted in this session. And this is called the Data Protection Regulation. Now, these aspects deal with protection of data. And they deal with personally identifiable information. The US, of course, has got its own regulations. I was speaking on a topic recently. Uh, and they've got uh, uh, protection and regulations uh, relating to security availability, processing integrity, confidentiality, privacy, till all these regulations came into being, uh, very few people actually knew and understood the difference between confidentiality and privacy. So these terms are uh, evolving, the concepts are evolving. Uh, at every board meeting, when I'm presenting uh, either as the internal auditor or uh, as a risk uh, specialist, I'm asked the question uh, either by the chairman of the board or the chairman by the audit committee or by the independent directors. Uh, how secure are we? So it's becoming very much, uh, very much a, a, a topic for discussion and concern. Now, I'd like to end my answer on this on a very lighter note. Uh, what's in store when the dusk settles? There are skeletons in the cupboard. 
they will just keep on falling. We've got to make sure that uh, we've got our cupboard secure. Fantastic. Well said. Absolutely. And, and I, I like the fact that after putting all the tension in there, you very nicely also released it for us. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. So. Uh, okay. So first and foremost, the dust will never settle. I think it's our mindset because we're used to stable periods. We want stability after some change, 10 years stability before the next comes through. It doesn't happen anymore. Right. No, because it's going to move very, very fast. And quite a few in the audience will remember that we used to queue up in a study booth to call home. Nice and so yeah, nine, nine o'clock was half and 11 was quarter. Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny, isn't it? Just a just couple of decades and the whole thing changes. So first and foremost, expectation of dust settling down is wrong. Second thing, tech. Getting obsessed with tech is also wrong. Tech is a tool to provide solutions to solve issues. As long as we see it from that perspective and use it powerfully to solve customer issues, society issues, country issues, we're in the right direction. It is no more, how I say so, the property of the rich in terms of reaching out to people. If you reach out to, let's say, a million people earlier, you had to be a big company, you had to be a big media. Today, a small boy in his garage can you know, do something which can reach out to a million, billion people very, very fast. As long as we are obsessed about providing solutions, making life easier for people, getting into a better world, better society, and we use all the tools available, we're in the right direction. The dust would never settle because now the change or the pace is very, very rapid, and you open it up to 6.4 billion people in terms of their contribution to society and the world at large. So it will not settle at least in the near future and times to come. Fantastic. I, I like that perspective that dust is not settling uh, anytime soon. Uh, the only good thing, of course, about this dust that we are talking about, unlike the dust that we get in Delhi, uh, is that this is good dust. We like this dust, yes. I right. absolutely agree with him he, he, that the dust will not settle. We, I think what we all have to guard against is our ability, to, I mean, we, we must see obsolescence as it's happening well before it actually happens. Right. Um, businesses are getting obsolete. Uh, products are getting obsolete. Categories are getting obsolete. Like you said, the STD booth is gone. And uh, I don't know how many businesses will go. There's somebody who said that over a billion jobs in the next 20 years would not exist. There would be new jobs, of course. There would be newer jobs. I think the key is that we need to constantly reinvent ourselves. There is technology to help us to reinvent ourselves. And the cycle for maybe, you know, there, there's the story that the eagle goes and uh, changes itself when it's old and then gets itself new wings and new whatever once in 40 years. Maybe the time to reinvent yourself is once in four years. I don't know. But each of us have to guard against obsolescence, obsolescence of our businesses, of us getting obsolete, if we don't keep adding to our skill sets. I think this technology has put that challenge in front of every one of us. Every human being today has to watch out for that before he gets, if, if not, he's going to be obsolete before he knows it. And then there's no point in crying about this. I mean, that's what I think technology is doing. You need to keep reinventing yourself. Absolutely. And uh, I think uh, one of the key takeaways for me here, dust is not settling. Uh, you know, we, we need to keep fighting obsolescence. There was a time when we used to say maybe once in 10 years, you're saying once in four years. I was reading, a, you know, an article on HBR, I think, a few weeks ago, which said that, uh, you know, my father's generation, which is, uh, you know, when, when he was still at the peak of his career, 80s and the 90s, uh, you know, people changing, a, a tangential change in career paths uh, was about, in India, was about, uh, you know, 14% of the folks that they graduated as engineers and then never practiced engineering and went into management or halfway through went into law. Uh, in my generation, so, you know, 90s, 2000s, uh, they're saying that that figure has gone up to close to about 34%, one tangen tangential career change in your lifetime. And they're saying with what we call the millennials, there's going to be 30% again, but definitely two tangential changes in one career lifespan. Uh, so 
three folks out of 10 would definitely make two tangential career changes. And I'm pretty certain a lot of that would have to do with tech. And they say 2025, one out of 10 of us in this room right now would definitely not be doing what we are doing today. So I think that, that that's a little taste of the times to come. But all, all three of you, gents, thank you very, very much for uh, all of those uh, you know, interesting insights that you've uh, put our way. Um, and before you, you know, uh, leave the stage, let's just quickly ask the audiences if they have any questions for any of you here. Yeah? Um, audiences, time for some questions from you, or even a perspective from you. Uh, you are the disruption. You are the disruptor. It's your worry which, is, which has to be solved. And if you look at all the previous so-called unicorns created, they solved your worry. Be it for the taxi, be it for a stay, be it for a grocery, be it for the need to reach out to people using a platform. So when you look at disruption and tech, I think we again get too obsessed with looking at tech. As long as we are obsessed about our worries and the worry of people around us, and we can solve it using whatever means, and tech is one of the powerful means that we can use to solve it, we are disrupting ourselves very fast, and we're doing the right thing for society. Disruption for the sake of disruption, or killing a business for the sake of killing a business, is a fad which is much talked about, but the core of it has to be that it has to solve some worry, some issue of a person, of a society. As long as it's being done, I think disruptions will happen for the good, and it shall continue being so. Absolutely, I think so. This Technology is disruptive because it's innovative. Technology is disruptive because the innovation always brings about a better way. And uh, the, 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 cha the challenge for the existing people is to s simply keep changing the benchmarks to which they would satisfy themselves for their own performance. And because technology allows you to do so much more in so much lesser time than what you used to do, the same thing yesterday or day before yesterday, there's so much more that's possible. And those solutions, like you said, the solutions are what are going to change the world and make it a better place. Of course, it's going to be tough for people who don't know how to change with it or fast enough. That's about it. That's why it's disrupting some people. That's why it's helping a lot of people. So I see technology in a very positive way. And I think all of us must be ready for that in a positive sense it is going to give us a better way to do the things that we normally do.